Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint lily pad bridge with a pretty willow tree. So this is a very simple painting tutorial that I have for you this week. And the first thing I'm going to do on my 11 by 14 inch canvas that I'm going to be using is I'm going to spray it down with a fine mist sprayer. So I don't do this every time. I do this when I want to apply a very thin sort of wash layer of paint to this. So if you don't have a fine mist sprayer, you can actually just use a wet paintbrush, so like a regular three quarter inch wash brush and just kind of make sure it's clean, dip it in the water and just apply a very thin layer of water on your canvas so that when we apply the paint, it's going to allow us to have a very thin layer that can be blended easily. And that can be our first layer, which is called like a wash layer because the acrylic paint is watered down. So I went ahead and did that. I'm painting on a flat surface, but if you were painting on an easel, none of this water should be dripping down. If it's dripping down, you have it too wet. So just a very thin layer of water on your canvas. And we're going to do our background. So our background is a gradient of dark at the top to light in the middle to dark back on the bottom. And we're gonna only use two colors to do that technique. I have phthalo blue, which is a very dark blue color, and titanium white. So I'm going to load my brush in the phthalo blue, and you can start at the top or the bottom. I'm going to start at the bottom, and I'm going to apply the phthalo blue, so left and right strokes all the way across your canvas, and it should glide very easily because of that wet layer that we applied to our canvas. And what you want to achieve is your paint kind of running out as you go up, and it should get lighter. Um, another way to kind of force it to get lighter is to kind of release the pressure so you're not pressing as hard as you get as you approach the middle part of your canvas, kind of let go of the pressure of the brush. Um, when you get to the middle point of your canvas, so this is an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So my midpoint is about five and a half inches from the bottom. Yours might be different if you're working on a different size canvas, but you can kind of, you can get a ruler if you want and kind of see where that midpoint is. That's the lightest point of our background. And you can go ahead and load your brush in titanium white and apply the white in that area and kind of blend it with your blue. So your blue is dark at the bottom, gets lighter, and it blends to that white right in the middle. And you can kind of blend that white down a little bit. Then I'm going to repeat the exact same thing again for the top, which would be our sky in this painting. So you want to go ahead and rinse your brush off all the way so that we can start fresh with phthalo blue so that the top of our sky can be dark and then it's going to do the same thing. If you need to apply a water to that area again, you can just be careful if you're spraying it, don't spray the bottom part of your painting because your paint will run if you do that. But I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start at the bottom and with the phthalo blue, so load it with the phthalo blue. So this is our darkest part and it's going to be dark because I'm pressing kind of firm with my brush. I'm going left and right across the canvas. It's gliding nicely across because of the first layer of water right there. And I'm just going to, as I'm working my way up, kind of release the pressure and let my paint run dry so that it gets lighter and then grabbing titanium white when you get to your midpoint so that your middle part of your painting is brighter so that horizon line where the water area and the sky meet that's our horizon line so i'm just going to grab some white in there and i'm going to go back in my middle area and just apply that white it does not have to be perfectly center if it's a little higher at top or a little higher at the bottom, it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just applying that white, kind of blending it down just a little bit, but I wanna make sure that the top and the bottom are a lot darker than the middle. So what you can do now is if you have leftover paint on your palette, you can take that and you can go ahead and paint the sides of your canvas with your blue and white, because we are done with blue and white. 
for now, I believe. And the next step you need to do is let this dry. So this is a good time to take a break and come back, or you can get like a hair dryer and dry it real quick and do this next step. So this next step, I'm going to be using a chalk pencil to draw in my composition of this. Um, you can skip this step if you feel confident about just painting it in, but I like to use these chalk pencils to kind of draw a roadmap of what I'm painting so I kind of know what I'm doing and where I'm going. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my pencil here is to draw this little peninsula island thing that our uh, willow tree is growing on. And our island, we'll just call it a peninsula. Our peninsula is about the center point. So if you um, find where your horizon line is and the bottom and you just kind of find the center of that, you're gonna draw kind of like a narrow land area, kind of a hill, it kind of goes out to a point, almost to the middle, but it's not exactly to the middle of the canvas. And so if I took my ruler here, it's about seven inches from the edge of the canvas and about two and a quarter high. Yours does not have to be exact. So after our peninsula, we're gonna do this bridge. We don't see the full bridge. It goes at an arc. Um, the bottom piece starts on the far right edge of our peninsula and it curves, the arc goes off the canvas. So we don't see the far right edge of the bridge. It kind of goes off the canvas. I'm just sketching an arc and that arc goes a little bit. So the bottom arc goes just a little bit below our horizon line. It's about the same height as our peninsula actually. And I'm gonna use my ruler to help make these uh, vertical lines for our bridge. So this one goes up about three inches. So I did a vertical line at the bottom of that and that's going to help me offset this top arc. So it's offset about three inches, but again, it doesn't have to be exact. So we are above our horizon line at this point. So this top arc piece is above the horizon line. Keep in mind when we paint this in, we might adjust this and might have to erase our chalk later and that's okay. And then I'm going to sketch out my tree, my willow tree here. And so I started with the base of it where the roots kind of trumpet out. And I'm just going to lightly sketch some of my branches so it kind of branches off into three major sections. And this middle piece branches off into two sections. Willow trees have kind of twisty, curvy branches. So I'm kind of, when I'm drawing this, I'm kind of doing wavy lines. I'm just sketching that. So it's got the three major branches that are branching out, twisty lines, the middle piece branches out into three pieces. And again, when we paint this in, we can definitely update it or change it as we paint. Moving right along, we're going to paint our peninsula first. And so I'm gonna load my palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, which is kind of a dark, sort of hunter's sort of green color and raw sienna. And I'm also going to be using my number eight round brush. I'm gonna load my brush in some water. You can tap it dry a little bit, but I'm gonna let that water kind of disperse in my paint a little bit, help loosen it up and make it a little bit more flowy when I paint. I'm going to mix about equal parts of that raw sienna in the green, maybe a little bit less than equal, a little bit more green than the raw sienna. That's gonna make my green a little bit more kind of natural looking. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint my peninsula in. So I'm gonna be doing strokes that are going left and right, but kind of wavy. I wanna paint around the base of my tree because I don't wanna lose that drawing part of the tree. Um, if you wanna paint over the base, if that's easier and that makes more sense to you, you can do it that way. Um, so the base, the bottom part of my peninsula is a little bit darker and the top back part's a little bit lighter. So when I get to the back part, I'm gonna add just a little bit of white in that color that I mixed on my palette. That's gonna lighten that color up. And I'm going to do that kind of in the back part of the peninsula and kind of blend it down into the darker green area. And again, the strokes are going horizontal, kind of wavy-ish, so, and kind of letting that the colors blend 
on the canvas. And I'm going to make the bottom part of the land here just a little bit darker by adding a second coat of that green and brown combination. And we can always go back and add a little bit of black down there if we need to. And so then I'm going to paint the tree next. So our tree is a combination of Mars black and burnt umber. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my number eight round brush off. I'll still be using that brush for the tree. Let me get all that green off and kind of set it to the side and get the colors burnt umber and Mars black. I'm going to load my number eight back in the water and tap it dry a little bit, but I want that water to kind of disperse in our paint here. I'm going to double load it in the brown and the black. The little bit of water is going to help with the flow, especially with these branches. I find if you loosen the paint a little bit with the water, it helps get the paint to flow and gives you more control over creating our branches. So I'm starting at the trunk of the tree where it flutes out a little bit. And this is kind of a twisty sort of style tree. So when I'm doing these strokes, I'm doing them very loosely, but kind of wavy almost to get that texture, that wavy texture on our tree trunk. So this branch over here is going to go out to the left. So what I do with these branches is I press kind of hard at first and then I release the pressure of the brush. This number eight round brush is very versatile in the fact that I could make some very, very thin strokes with the tip of the brush. The, um, this particular brush has a nice point to it. And I could make thicker strokes just by pressing hard and using all the bristles of the brush. So I like to start out thick and then I like to release the pressure and go thin. You can try to do it the opposite way if that works better for you. You can start out thin with the little thin tip of the branch and then you can press down and go uh, harder, thicker to create the thicker stroke. So whatever, which way you feel comfortable with. Also, if you have a brush that you like to use for branches instead of the round brush, you can use that one instead. But the style of this tree has lots of wavy sort of twisty branches. So I'm having these smaller branches, it's kind of hard to make those branches look like they're twisty. But you can have your branches kind of go wavy a little bit as you paint them. And you don't have to follow your chalk lines. I don't usually follow my chalk lines, they're just guidelines. And we can always erase that chalk line later or paint over it so you don't have to follow all of those lines and you can create your own branches. So I'm just going in and I made that part thicker and I kind of made that part twist a little bit to the right so there's a little bit of a bump on the side of the trunk of the tree. So before this dries, I'm going to highlight it and without rinsing my brush, I wiped it off with the towel and I grabbed titanium white and a little bit of raw sienna. Then I'm going to paint on the right side of the tree. So I'm going to start at this trunk where it curves. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to curve down and go to the left. So that is creating that tree trunk. It's making it look like it's twisting just by adding that lighter color in there. And I took that lighter color and extended it down a little bit. And then I just kind of did some crisscross sort of wavy strokes on the left side of the trunk. And I'm just taking those lighter strokes and kind of going up into the branches and kind of doing some twisty strokes in there. Some of these branches that are smaller, it's kind of harder to highlight those. So I just did a very, very thin line and then I can go back in and kind of blend that a little bit better. But I'm just adding those lighter colors on the right side of the tree. Added a little pop of white right there on the right side of that twist. We want to leave a good amount of dark still showing as well. Next, I'm going to rinse and dry this brush and use this number eight round brush to do water reflection. So I'm going to do the little white lines in the water. So I'm gonna get pinch this to get my tip. So I'm gonna add that white right there at the tip and I can use that to create some very fine lines. So our little white water reflection lines are going to be longer 
at the bottom part of the water and shorter towards the back. And you can do a variety. Some of them are not that long, but there's a lot of kind of longer pieces down here. And then as I go towards the back, the water reflect reflection lines are going to be kind of smaller and shorter. So just little um, smaller lines. Sometimes it's hard to get those lines to be extra small. So smaller kind of in the back, longer kind of in the front. You can even press hard and make some thicker lines as well. Just don't do too many because it might look a little bit too busy um, because we still need to do the tree reflection, the bridge reflection, and our lily pads. So we don't want to have too much going on in the water. So just a few subtle little lines kind of all over and we can always go back and add more if needed a few kind of longer pieces down here. Then I'm going to do the reflection in the tree. I'm going to make some a, kind of a watered down black slash brown, almost to a watercolor consistency, a little bit thicker than watercolor consistency because we don't want it to drip. Um, I did a line right under the peninsula, so the darker kind of shadow line to kind of indicate there's a reflection down there. And then I'm going to do left and right, very, very loose strokes, just using the tip of the brush that creates the reflection from the tree. So if you wanted to add more brown in it, you can. You don't uh, have to. You can just do it with the brown and the black. And I'm going to move right along with the brown and black combination. So same brush, number eight round, same brown and black. And I'm going to go ahead and paint my bridge in. So you want to be kind of careful here, kind of a steady hand. We drew our bridge out so we see our little arc here. We want, just want to kind of sketch it lightly at first and then I can make the bottom part thicker if needed. So I'm doing the bottom arc first. If your paint is not flowing, add a teeny bit of water in it to get that to flow nicely. It should be a, a thin layer of paint. And then up here as well, this top part, I'm just using the tip of the brush to kind of sketch the bridge. So I get my, uh, my line in the way I want it to look. And then I can go back over it and I can make it thicker by kind of pressing harder on my brush, making it thicker. And then I can highlight this later and add more color if needed. Right now it's just that dark color. So I get the top and the bottom arc. And if I want, I can grab some raw sienna and add a little bit of, um, if I wanted color variation in that, if I didn't want it just to be dark, I can go in there with some raw sienna, just kind of add that to the top part of our line. And if it's blending too much, we can always wait for that black to dry and then just go back in and add that color. So I'm just adding that raw sienna right at the top. I'm making this bottom part of the bridge a little bit thicker. So that would be the walkway. So it would be a little bit thicker. This is a kind of a basic bridge. Just letting that raw sienna blend with our black a little bit. And then when we do our vertical pieces, I'll show you a trick you can use with the ruler to help paint those vertical lines. So I'm going in with that raw sienna and just kind of doing the same thing, making that top piece a little bit thicker as well. And then our vertical pieces, if you get a ruler, so just a straight edge or a ruler, and just kind of line it up with the side of your canvas, you can also use a T-square for this. And you don't even have to put your ruler on the canvas. You can just set it to the side of your brush and use that as a guideline for painting your vertical line. So you just take your ruler and you kind of hold it steady, use it as a guideline for painting your vertical line. So I'm just estimating these vertical pieces. They don't have to be the same width the part. Um, if I were to measure this, it'd probably be an inch and a half apart, maybe two inches. So just I did four, five vertical pieces. 
And if you feel better about drawing them with the chalk first to get the spacing right, you can do that. And then the other ones in the back, I just kind of didn't use the ruler for that, but I used raw sienna and I just placed that relatively close to the line, kind of to the left of each of the lines. So very simple, very basic bridge. And I can go in here with my lighter color. So I just double loaded that in some white and raw sienna. And just kind of lightly paint the bottom part of the walkway. So the vertical pieces in the front kind of overlap um, the bottom arc line. And then maybe a little bit of highlight at the top. It's still wet, so it's not grabbing much of that lighter color and I can go back later and highlight that more once that dries. So we have our basic bridge in. And then so the reflection, super easy, much more simplified. Um, so I'm just doing a mirror of that. I did the bottom arc opposite of what it was and I did the vertical lines and then that. So it doesn't have to be an exact mirror image of it, just a very close representation to make it look like it's reflecting in the water. So if you wanted to get more detailed with the reflection, you can, but you don't have to. Next, we're going to do the willow tree branches slash leaves that are kind of drooping down, starting with the ones that are kind of further in the background. And this is a technique that I'm going to be using a flat brush for. So I'll be using my three quarter flat brush, that same brush we use to paint the background. And I'm going to load my palette with three colors, brilliant yellow green, that's a light lime green color, hooker's green hue, the dark color, and the white titanium white. And I'm going to triple load my brush into those three colors and also very important um, make sure your brush is dry if your brush was wet that's fine um, this works best if the brush is dry when you're tri triple loading because we're going to do kind of a dry brush technique so I loaded it in all three of those colors and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to drag quickly kind of flick my brush and you should get kind of an airy feathery look here when you start at the top and you just kind of flick the brush and release the pressure very fast to where there's like barely any paint on the canvas so it's got to look like a dry brush technique you can do that full width or you can also and i did a variety of this you can turn it on its side and do the vertical part of the brush and that creates some thinner strokes and you can kind of drag that down a little bit further so some of those strokes uh, are longer and some are shorter so you want a nice variety of that you also want a nice variety of your green so we can play around with our colors here a little bit um, i can load my brush back in just the green so when i go back and do this type of stroke I have some darker pieces in there. So notice how I'm doing this all the way across the top part of the canvas. And I'm doing a variety of uh, long and short strokes and a variety of light and dark green. So that light green actually makes some really, really pretty bright green colors in there, some pretty highlights. So I'm just varying my width. So sometimes I use the full width, sometimes I use the side of the brush and I reload my brush in different combinations of the dark green, the light green and the white. So you wanna just kind of keep going across. Um, you really want a lot, a lot of that blue is still kind of showing through, so it's not opaque, especially towards the bottom when it kind of wisps away. That's kind of the point, is to not cover all the sky at the top so you can kind of see through your strokes at that point. So another kind of stroke that we're gonna do in our tree is with the number eight round brush, and this one, is a wavy kind of stroke. So I'm still going to be using those three different colors and you can triple load if you want. I'm just gonna kind of load in one color at a time right now, maybe mix some colors on my palette. But it's just a long wavy piece that starts at the branch and kind of hugs the branch and goes down. 
So these ones look like they're attached to the willow tree. And so I can just do a variety of those wavy strokes using the different greens. If you wanted to, you can add a little brown or um, black to your green. That'll make it darker. So if you want some darker pieces in there, add some raw sienna or, or your burnt umber or your black on your palette. You can play around with the colors on your palette. You don't have to use the exact combination that I'm using. I just like color variety. So I like to do some lighter colors here and there and then some darker colors here and there to get a nice balance of lights and darks. So this one, this round of, of willow tree pieces, um, they're lighter, so I used white this time, but I'm using more of the tip of the brush to create some thinner strokes, but it's still the wavy style of stroke. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing up here. Long, wavy pieces, variety of lengths. You can even have some pieces overlap your bridge if you want to have some pieces maybe hanging down from the sky area from another tree and it's overlapping your bridge. So I'm just going to do that over here on the right. I'm going to take this, have a long wavy piece, and that one kind of, it kind of looks like it's going behind the bridge. If you, if you wanted it to look more like it's overlapping, you can use a lighter color like the white. It's going to make it opaque enough to cover your dark color in the bridge. I'm going to do some grass textures on the ground area and some in the water. So on my palette, I'm mixing a very dark green. I added a little bit of Mars Black into the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and watered it down slightly. Then I'm taking my brush, slightly watered, so I can get that flow, and just using the tip of that brush to create little angled lines, little clusters of grass or shrubbery on our peninsula area. Maybe there's some at the base of the bridge. Maybe there's some kind of on the edge of our little peninsula. And there could be some even in the water. I can even take some grass pieces that are growing out of the water because it would be shallow in that area. Add a few more wavy lines in there using a dark green. Sometimes it helps if you want to like squint your eyes and think, okay, well maybe this is too dark right here. I should add some lighter areas or maybe this is too light and I should add some darker areas. Get a nice balance of contrast. And just doing some more grass lines in the water, some grass lines on the bottom of the canvas. Maybe those are in the water. Maybe there's another piece of land down there that we don't see. And some more grass lines over here in the lower right corner area. So I think we are ready for our lily pads. And for the lily pads, I used this number four round brush. It's a smaller brush. It's gonna give us more control over making these small lily pads. And the colors I used are the same colors I used in the willow tree leaves. Um, the brilliant green, the hooker's green, and the white. And I triple loaded those colors and did kind of a thick stroke to create each of the lily pads. So I'm just kind of painting a lily pad shape, kind of an oval with a little opening on the side, kind of making a little letter C that's squished together. So I'm just kind of pressing, putting a lot of pressure on my brush to create these little lily pads. Just kind of think abstract. We're not making these lily pads look realistic, just kind of impressionistic. This painting reminds me a lot of the Monet lily pad painting. So doesn't have to look real at all. Um, one thing that looks cool is if we make our lily pads look smaller in the distance, so kind of under the bridge area, I did smaller little marks for the lily pads and the lily pads that are lower in the canvas are larger. That creates the illusion of depth. Okay. 
I also took the green, the darker green, and just did a little line on the bottom of each of the lily pads to create a darker area or a shadow or reflection towards the bottom. So I did that with the dark green. Just a little tiny darker green mark on the bottom of each of our lily pads. You can even use that darker green to create dark lily pads. You can have a variety of light and dark and medium green lily pads. They do not all have to be the same kind of green. While our lily pads are drying, I went in and touched up some of the branches in the tree just to make some of the branches look like they're overlapping our greenery. You don't have to do this. This is completely optional, especially if you're happy with the way your tree looks. I just wanted to take some of this branch and go back over it so some of those branches are in front of our greenery and not all the greenery is in front of it. You can even create some new branches if you want. Uh, that's the number four round brush, by the way, and using the black and brown combination, the same color combination I used to paint the branches initially. And then you'll want your lily pads to dry and make sure they're dry and load your palette with medium magenta and freshen up some titanium white if you need to. Um, and we're gonna use our number four round brush, kind of dry that all off, thick strokes again with these uh, flowers. So I'm just gonna grab my pink and I'm just gonna do a very basic like little stroke that goes from the bottom of the flower piece and just kind of goes upwards. So I'm gonna do it with this one. So just kind of a little, little diagonal lines, kind of curved slash diagonal lines that go from the bottom kind of curving up kind of like releasing the pressure doing each stroke from the bottom and just kind of stroking upwards to create the simple little little lily pad flowers so I'm going to do that on all of them for the smaller ones in the distance I don't have to do that kind of stroke I can just do like a little dot of pink on those and if your pink's not standing out and it's not looking very bright, you can add a little bit of white into it. The white will help that pink look kind of brighter and more opaque. So if you want to, you can go back in with your white and just kind of go over some of your pink pieces or just do a few strokes over some of your pink pieces and that'll make the pink flower piece stand out a little bit better. Grabbed a little bit of my dark green there and I just want to do a little bit of shadow reflection. did that earlier um, with the bottom part of the lily pad, but I just wanted to do a few little subtle lines kind of under, not all of them, uh, most of the bigger ones. Just a little bit of uh, reflection underneath. doesn't have to be something uh, too detailed. I'm going to rinse. I'm going to be doing touch-ups for the rest of this painting. For the most part, it's finished, but I want to touch up a few things here, including the bridge. I want to add a little bit more color to my bridge. So I grabbed white and mixed it with some raw sienna. So now this bridge is dry, I can go back and I can highlight this top part with a little bit of that raw sienna and white. Kind of gives it a little bit of brightness at the top. So maybe some light is hitting that area right there. And then right here as well on the walkway piece. So that kind of brightens our bridge, gives it a little bit more color so it's not just a silhouette style bridge. And of course, if you just want your bridge to be the solid black color because you don't want to do the highlighting, you don't have to do that. You can definitely simplify that. And then same thing with the tree, I wanted to add some brighter colors in there. So with the raw sienna and white, just going back in and adding just a pop of that lighter color right on the far right edge, especially the part where the tree kind of twists. I then went in and added a few more white reflection lines in my water. So I rinsed my eight round, grabbed a little bit of that white on the tip and did the very subtle, thin white lines kind of all throughout. Actually, this is the number four round still, not the number eight round. 
just doing a few little smaller lines kind of clustered in the distance to kind of make it look like that water's sparkling way back there. You just do very small clustered together lines and then there's water back here as well. I can go back and add a few more pops of green to my lily pads. If I feel like my lily pads need to be touched up, maybe that one is too dark, so I added a lighter color in there. Then I took my three quarter flat, added some more of these kind of strokes in there. Again, these are all optional touch-ups. Yours will vary depending on if you wanted to add more of this or not. Maybe extend a few pieces down a little bit further. I can even use this to do some uh, grass. I can show you here in just a second. So if you wanted some lighter grass pieces, you can use the tip of your brush to kind of go over those darker pieces that were already there to kind of lighten them up. Give it some pop of brighter color down in that area. And the last touch up I did was go over with the second coat on the some of the flowers. So back with my round brush, especially this one right here, make that brighter. So just a second coat of our magenta on some of those, get that pink to kind of pop better. Um, but that is the conclusion of Lily Pad Pond with the Willow Tree. Hope you enjoyed this simple painting. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.